I don't know what magical power was in that young golden face of Prince Aralmas Hivarmar. Even so, the prince did not even frown at that time. He showed not the slightest sign of anger. He stood with a guilty expression on his face like Conan caught stealing butter. There was no trace of reproach in the little rascal, nor any intention to fight him. However, the hands and feet of Kalan Takakandar, who was an ardent heart and immeasurably emotional, became hot at that moment. His face was covered with sweat. Without even realizing what he was doing, he raised both his hands in salutation and said, Pani's Selva. Ihangonda Hero. Chola Nation's Penance. What is this Kolam? What is this thing? What crime have I committed to be punished like this? I should have mercy on the mistake I made a while ago. I am sorry. I have become blind and unable to see. Nath said with trembling voice. And the prince stopped the one who was going to speak in the same manner and said, Commander. What is this? Are you committing a crime? This boy who knows nothing forgives you. Said. Cutting off this hand that held them back would not be enough punishment. Cutting off my tongue for calling Ada would not be enough. Their words fall on my ears with disdain. Enough, stop. You have done your duty to fulfill your responsibility. What is the fault in that? The fault is mine. That I will come as an elephant in this guise. I never expected. Can you do this? Why? Should I have welcomed the great hero of the Chola country like this? Shouldn't I have waited at the front door with all manners of etiquette and greeted him with the sound of triumphant trumpets? I came in this guise knowing that you would do so. This is not the time for all that. Don't you know? Did not the princess of Kotumbalar tell of the evil attempts of the conspirators a little while ago? It seems to me that it may be true. Prince. Have you included me with those Pandian conspirators? My God! I am inwardly happy to see the arrangements they have made to protect my father, the Emperor. First to see my father, and then. Did you think that I would stop you from seeing the Emperor? If anyone had told them that I was such a sinner. I would never have believed it, Commander. Then why this disguise? Could I have entered the fort in any other way, just think? The army of the South has come and surrounded the fort. They must have known why the great farmer had come. Isn't it fair that I shut the castle gates? Is there any crime in that? Very fair, the great Veeler is out of his wits. I came in this guise so that he would prevent me from entering the castle. I brought his daughter with me. Fortunately, he did not notice me. Their sharp eyes found out. My eyes were closed. That's why I didn't know it when I saw it. Please forgive me for saying that you are an elephant. Don't say that. I didn't think that you and my father were different. You sent people to take me prisoner and bring you away. God! What is this word? I sent men to imprison? Their father, the emperor, sent them to see them immediately. Didn't I know that, commander? They came when I was in Salon. Not the Emperor's order, but the squires said those near me. Our enemies would have said so. I said to them, my father's command is somehow worth my trouble, so is the command of the reapers. Prince! Are you still testing me? What should I command you to meet your father? If you ask me to come with you, I will come. If you ask me to stand here, I will stop? The Prince's will is the command burning on my head said the small gardener humbly. It looks like the commander is asking you to stay here. We've been standing here talking for a long time. Look at that! said the prince. The little reaper looked back. A little while ago, he saw that all his men, who had been standing at a distance, were approaching. Not only them, the palace gatekeepers have also arrived. Some of the soldiers who were still standing in the distance were coming apart. All those who had come near were looking at Pawnee's Selvara with unblinking excitement. By the time the little gardener looked back, the light of the lamp fell well on the prince's face and it looked very bright. One of the soldiers shouted long live the prince. He said. 
Long live Pawnee's silver! said another. Long live the valiant warrior who left Mahinda! said another. On hearing these voices, all the Vilakara soldiers started rushing there. Long live Pawnee's silver! From many voices. There were cheers. The sound was very faint at that time because of the palace doorstep and the small gardener was there. The soft breeze sounded like the swish of a skunk on a newly loosened tree. In the following chapters, we will see how that gentle sound grew and grew bigger and bigger and became a great chant that surpassed the roar of thousands of waves of the great ocean. Commander! It was a mistake for us to stand here and talk. Now you see why I didn't want to make myself known until I entered the palace. Asked the prince. I see, my lord. I have spoken peace to them. Please hurry in. Said Kalan Takakander.